Alrighty, so for this video, I'm actually going to be starting a new series that I'll be adding on to every now and then, and that is carving tips. When I first started, it was actually kind of really hard to get going because you can find extremely beginner tutorials fairly easy, and you can find <laughs> almost master level tutorials very easily, but it's but it's actually really kind of hard to find some information on how to, you know, do certain tricks, certain design concepts, uh, when to use certain burrs. Uh, it's it, <laughs> you kind of just have to figure it out for yourself. So I figured I would start a new series d detailing some of those things that gave me a lot of trouble. And for today's volume one video is going to be overlapping. It really is a very, very simple technique that can make for some really, really cool patterns, and it's not that hard to do, but it is a little tricky to get the hang of. You can turn it into just plain designs like this, or actually use it to make things like this flower. I'd also like to apologize in advance if these videos are a little bit longer than my standard but I wanted to get some good information across and they're gonna be pretty information heavy compared to my normal videos so but I'll be still making sure to try to keep them as short as I can alright so to start I'll explain my design so this I want to be sitting up a little you know a little ways and honestly this rock is thin enough I might just go all the way down but after that, I want these to be somewhat stepped. So right here, I'll carve down, and I'll leave this uplifted, and then carve this edge down again. So it looks like each one is, you know, kind of overlapping the one below it. And to start that, you want one of these. Well, really, you want anything that has a flat tip. One other thing to look for is you want to use one that's fairly robust, so one like this size, or better yet, the size above it. And I use these for the main shaping because these ones are actually 80 grit, so they absolutely blow through soft material like this and make it that much faster. With these, uh, where are they? <laughs> these, you can burn them out pretty quickly if what you're carving is fairly hard like say quartz or an agate so if you're going to be doing a lot of moving I would highly recommend getting some some really low grit burrs but anyway I'll start that right now and yeah Forgot to mention, <laughs> once you have your design on pencil, I would recommend going over it with Sharpie because as you probably saw, I was wiping off all of the pencil marks while I started carving. Anyway, back to it. Alright, now as you can see, I've got that lowered down quite a bit but if you look it's not flush to the line so now we were coming in at a side angle like this now we're gonna flip it and come along that border at another side angle and again something with a flat tip is pretty much the only way to go about this next part and then from there we'll do that center spiral If you look now, you can see it is much sharper along that entire edge. Now, for this inner part, you could switch to something smaller, like this, to get that edge up around in here. 
but a better way is to take one of these again fairly low grit and that is gonna keep a nice circular outline right in here and then come in with one of these afterward to do what I just did along the edge in that circular smaller part right here so I'll do that right now sharper if you get in close you can see that there is a little bit of a uplift right along there and unfortunately my rotary tool won't be able to get past this so I can't come in to do this method down there in here so what you do is you take one of these right here and these are actually designed to cut on the the tip so you can come in here and really sharpen up all of those edges. Alright, now that we are to this point, we are ready to start moving on to the lines. And there's three ways to go about doing that. One of which is a cutoff wheel, diamond cutoff wheel. But the problem is with these, um, if you're carving stone, they're going <laughs> to not last very long. They go dull with rock pretty, pretty fast. So that is one option if you're carving something really, really soft. Uh, another option is taking one like this. I'll back up enough so you can see it. Like this or this. And going over all of those lines with those but in my opinion the best option is one of these if I can get it to focus these are perfect because instead of having to come in with the other ones you have to come in pretty much laying down like this with these you come in and just go over it almost like a pencil and these are ideal this might be one of my most used burrs right here. So I'll show both ways and then, yeah, move on from there. As you can see they both achieve the same result I just find one easier than the other <laughs> and that could maybe totally just be me but yeah I prefer the other one so now I'm gonna take one of my drums and come along if I flip it upside down the top of each one and really lay it down at a good angle and leave this bottom side uplifted and it'll look as though the pieces are overlapping each other. Might not make sense right now, but you'll see what I mean once I get started. example of what I meant. As you can see they kind of look like they're overlapping. Now so from here we want to 
undercut these a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to pull this one back out because as you can see, it sits at an angle. So if we get it flat on there, it will make these raise out a bit and that bottom part along, you know, this we'll call it a pedal, <laughs> um, undercut that much more. So we'll do that right now and yeah. Here it is after I've done that. You can see how those really look like they're overcutting the ones above them. Pulled upside down, you can really see how those shadows cast. Really simple, and it looks really cool. And that process can pretty much be done with any design you want. Alright, so the next one is a fairly simple pattern, but for this one you're going to need a compass, and I'll explain why in just a minute. I'm going to draw everything out, and I'll be right back. Alright, circles are drawn on, it'll make sense afterward, but now I have to draw out a few lines. Alrighty, so here it is. I know it looks a little rough right now, but that's fine, we can make everything more symmetrical as we're carving. It's just basically to get a rough idea out. So to start we're gonna take one of these my heavy lifters just like I did before and thin the area around all of the pedals. After that we will oh what's a good one? Probably this. Use this to come in between each of the pedals. After that, we are gonna take this one right here, something like this, or this would work as well. Actually, honestly, even, even just circle bar would probably work too. And we're going to dish all of the insides of the pedals so that they're kind of cupped. And then after that we're going to take a little one of these and come in kind of just like this and undercut one side so that way it looks like the pedals are overlapping each other. things I wanted to touch on just really really fast. Um, one way that is really good to control dust, as you can see there's dust building up for the example's sake. Um, and typically the best way to control that would be a downdraft table, but I know that most people don't have a downdraft table nor do they have access to a downdraft table. So a great way around this is move my bag of garnets really quick set up a vacuum <laughs> have the hose coming off my I usually prop something up so it sits sort of like right here and it will literally pull up all of the dust as you're carving generally I use a drown draft table but I figured this would be better for the sake of example because most people don't have access to one of those so shop vac works too, doesn't really matter. Another thing is I'm thinking I want to cut this out entirely instead of engraving it down the way I did this one. So, and again, you can't use this with all rocks, but if you have a wet tile saw, you can cut soft stones with it. Um, I would not recommend 
cutting anything very thick, which this is perfect because it's super thin. But you can use a wet tile saw to do trimming, no problem. So I'm gonna do that really quick. And be right back. Here it is now that it's cut out, and I can come back in with my rotary tool to bring everything down a little farther. My shape is closer I'm gonna switch to a smaller one and come in to define those lines only on the outside I don't want to do the inside yet all right so I got everything ground down to where I want it. So now I'm going to take, again, anything with a flat tip. I'm going to use this one just to make it go faster and come along this inner circle because I want this inner circle to sit higher than the petals and you'll see why later. Then after that I'll come in along this face right here so that this edge of the pedal is lower and this edge of the pedal is higher and then that way it looks like each pedal is overlapping the next one. a little bit ahead just so I could show what the plan is. So with anything around one of these will work great. You come in on this edge to lower everything down and the reason for that is these will keep everything nice and round. Nothing will get too sharp edgewise and then once you're down as far as you want to go you just round these pedals over and then to make things easier go and do that edge on the net pedal next to it and then after that you come on this edge to round that over and what you end up with is a very natural pedal shape so and then after that you can take anything with a sharp edge to go back in and redefine the pedals and then oh where did I put it right here something like this works great to come in right about here so that you can undercut the pedals and then that really really makes them overlap so yeah That's what it looks like now that it's been all cut out and shaped. I think it looks pretty good. So from here, I'm going to take one of these and go over pretty much everything so I can get rid of the, the track marks from the burrs. And then after I use that, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that thunder or not, I'll come in with this flap sander and that will actually lightly polish the piece if you look I already did it to one pedal so that gets you a base polish and from there you can use you know buffing compounds or sandpaper or even just a clear coat but yeah I'll do that now All right. 
variety and there is the flower. You can see how each petal really cuts into the one behind it and they all cut, kind of curl into that center circle which is up higher than the rest of it. Now from here you'd probably jump into your polishing or just do a clear coat or uh, you know you have designs like this flower you can actually paint if you feel like it which really does make a pretty cool effect but because this is just an example and it's some very low grade rock I'm not gonna be doing anything past this I don't think but it is kind of amazing to see how that fairly crude design this right here can turn into something really cool and very 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 simple as you saw alrighty well I think that's gonna do it for this one I think that's that covers the basics of overlapping fairly well and between these two designs you can pretty much adapt that to any any carving you really want to and you saw firsthand how simple it really is so I'll make sure to have another one of these volumes out as soon as I can I hope you all enjoyed and you can find the links to my social media in the description so go ahead and like the video if I deserve it subscribe if you want to see yeah, these volumes as they come out and leave me a comment to let me know what you think the next volume should be I have some ideas but I'd also like to know what other people are are you know kinda of struggling with so definitely let me know and yeah I'll see you all next week